What's up, guys? Uh, sub podcast episode 110, uh, Streetwear and Lifestyle Discussion. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney. Across from me, virtually, we have one of my co hosts, uh, Lawrence Deloach. What's going on, buddy? What's up, bro? Um, and Luke could not be with us this week. He got kind of caught up. So we had to tap into Isaiah, um, friend of the show, guest favorite. You know what I mean? What's going on, Isaiah? How are you, buddy? Yo, man, chilling. Glad the sneaker game is still, still good. Still virtually yeah. going on. Like, so, I mean, yeah, I've been, I've been chilling, paying attention, you know. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Smoking, watching shit, watching shit, working out. Yeah, a lot of, <laughs> lot of smoking and watching. How was your 420? Was it good? Yeah, it was, but I, I never understand 420. Because for somebody who smokes all the time, it's like, you know, it's just another day. Like, what, what am I going to do? Like, <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's kind of like – uh, St. Patrick's Day, because I'm Irish, and then, you know, a bunch of Italians and Asians want to wear green. I'm like, all right, I was doing this before, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I hear, yeah, it's, it's the same kind of deal, but it's like, always good. I don't know. What are you supposed to do on 420? You usually get with other people. Like, what, what's the, I mean, I guess people have smoking shows. I, I, was, I saw a couple of those, some virtual shows, just mm-hmm. paying attention. So, it was that. Uh, what about you? Yeah. You, 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 yeah, I had good. I mean, I, just, I know, L, you don't really do the, that much, but. Yeah, I'm not the I'm not the biggest uh, weed smoker in the world, so you know. No, nah, he was uh, trying to get some dunks. That was his game. So yeah, yeah I I definitely dunks. trying. I definitely trying to get the uh, the uh, 420 uh, reverse skunk. Uh, they mm. they did a uh, the familiar uh, skate shop in uh, Minnesota. They had a uh, limited edition uh, 420 pairs. Uh, some of them were being uh, raffled off to customers. Uh, that was that was the the big Nike drop. Nike does a you know 420 dunk pretty much you know and and it was originally uh, supposed to be the strawberry coughs, uh, but it looks like those got pushed back or they got delayed. So we uh, we had these super limited edition dunks that came out that uh, no one really got. Uh, it was done via <laughs> nope. top date. Um, <laughs> it, it's interesting, man. Like uh, you know 420 pairs of sneakers. And and you know not all 420 of those are legitimately being raffled off because you know friends and family are getting pairs and you know and and team uh you know locals and, and the skate uh, sh- the skate team dudes was getting pairs so basically it, you know you had a better chance of uh, getting struck by lightning and you know as opposed to getting those sneakers so yeah uh, did what you guys think of them did you guys like them or I liked them. I mean, I'm not really like the 420 dunk guy. I'm not really 420 mm-hmm. wearable anything, you know, but I like those dunks. Like, if I got them, I'd, I'd, I'd rock those. You would rock those. Yeah. That brings up the discussion that a lot of people will always say, you know, mm-hmm. you're going to get something that there's only a few pairs of, can you, and you can flip those for a couple grand. Uh, you know what I mean? Are you really going to um, – are you going to keep or are you going to sell? I would. I have a track record of keeping and wearing all the shoes I should have sold, so I'd probably keep that going. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, what do you I, think? I I think so. Those purple. I'm a big purple fan. You know myself. I was looking at them though, and I don't think it's. I don't think it's a super like wearable shoe. I don't know. To me, me, my preference personally, I think the originals are definitely. I like the purple accents of it, but the fuzzy mm-hmm. and the purple. I just. Not really my thing, but um, I would definitely, if I gave him across a pair, I would have to flip it to just just for more other sneakers. That's how I would feel like morally good about it, just for other stuff that I really want. <laughs> so you're 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 the guy. Well, that's 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 we that's what we talk about on this podcast, man. A lot of things are you know you don't touch everything you want, so you know, yeah, sometimes yeah. you get something and you got to flip it for a uh, to get what you want. Yeah, it's, dude, jokery. it's like jokery vibes to me. See, yeah, incredible see Hulk, bro. yeah, and it's like, I don't know. I just don't. I'm, I'm, I'm not really into the look of it. I mean, probably yeah. unpopular opinion. I, I'm not into it. Oh, you like them? I like them, man. Um, you know, I, I once again, I, I like, I'm, I've been, a, I like dunks. I like dunk highs. Um, would I keep those? Uh, depends. Depends on, you know, what they're truly, you know, what they're going Is that a glow bottom? People. I don't know. I, I can't. No, really I don't tell think they're glow bottom. Oh, okay. I would have respected them a little less. Uh, glow bottom. Not gonna lie. <laughs> you don't like glow bottoms? 
Not really. It's like, it's so gimmicky. I, I don't know, not really. I don't think, I just don't like the way they look over time. They just well, don't okay, wait, really how do you feel well. about glow in general? I think it's, if it's done right, I think it's, it's fine. Like, I don't, like the, uh, the those, the, the Yeezys, I don't mind that. That, that glow, I think is nice. Mm. Um, it's not like on the bottom of the shoe. That just like, that's also the part that's supposed to be more functional, and then you, then you throw that in as an aesthetic, and it just looks bad. I just don't think I like the way they age. I'm, I'm really into how shoes age, because I like to wear them all, and like, I don't like that. I don't like glows mm -hmm. most of the time. Mm -hmm. Word. Well, they're, they're uh, like I said, they're, they're going for uh, a lot of money right now, uh, and and very few people have them. We saw some, some of them, uh, some of the team skaters uh, were familiar. They were getting uh, seated pairs. Um, we got to, I mean, if you look at, huh, I don't know, man, I, I, I'm, I'm like, I feel like what's the point of having a limp, that limited of a release? Like, it's like, it's really, how many people's hands are really touching those, you know, because, you know, it's like, it, that's what kind of trips me out about Nike. I feel like, and I feel like, obviously, I feel like this is a last minute uh, release for, to satisfy the 420 people, but you know, you, you look at something like that and you're just like, ah, like, dude, like you obviously could have made more pairs or you could have made this, you, you could have numbered, you could have did like, you know, you could have did a numbered version and an unnumbered version if that's what you were aiming for. I think that's what they did, box. probably. I think they probably have an unnumbered version somewhere. I mean, I, I would think so too. I mean, because 420 sneakers, I mean, that, no. My, um, Limited production knowledge uh, is, I'm pretty sure you have to order at least 144 of a sneaker to meet the factory minimums. At least that's the number I'm used to knowing. Um, mm -hmm. So 420, although it's very small, it's not like out of the realm of possibility for a factory to do it. But then again, you got to remember like, yeah, so small purchase order numbers, they probably made a thousand and got a bunch of unnumbered versions somewhere and then had the factory stamp that one out of 420 on the 420 of them. I, I definitely think there's some un, uh, unnumbered versions. Isaiah, what are you doing, man? You you out here, you-, you My man is eating on, on the pod. On podcast. <laughs> I mean, can hear his fucking bitch ass chewing. Oh, I mean, my bad. Dishes I'm... you're eating, I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I thought I was muted, my bad, y'all. <laughs> Sorry. He's just chewing. All right. It was all so, this 420 talk. My bad. No, it was, uh, it was uh, munchies. Very fair, very fair. Stay, 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 lo stay locked in for the next hour. That's all we need you just to be locked in. No, That's it. no I got you. I got you. All right. So, listen, um, you know, there's, there was some news coming out this week uh, with uh, StockX where uh, they laid off a portion of their, uh, their employees. Mm -hmm, 12%. Uh, during the 12% during the, uh, the COVID era. Um, what do you, you know, this is obviously for a company that, um, that just, you know, added a 3% uh, transaction fee, uh, laying off their employees, uh, their, their, uh, platform valued at a billion dollars. Uh, and, and it looks like they've laid off around a hundred employees. Uh, what is this saying for stock X right now, man? I mean, it's definitely saying that the sneaker market because it's one of the main hubs for purchasing and reselling sneakers is down. So um, against all thoughts that we might've had where this could go up, it's obvious that it's not. Well, I mean, you look at, okay, so the, the, there was around 100 to 150 staff members from the quality assurance, engineering and product and operations teams in the Detroit and Arizona offices. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, obviously StockX is, you know, they're, they're worldwide. They're, you know, they, they have one, they're in London, they're in, you know, Cali, they're in New York, but um, they obviously, I, I believe, you know, this kind of is very telling of what's going on with them. And for a company that definitely has some question marks in regards to uh, employees doing proper legit checks on sneakers and, and items where people have complained about, you know, the receiving sneakers that aren't real, yeah. Uh, and for them to lay off uh, uh, customers, I mean employees, and then you have uh, Goat, you have eBay, and you have Grilled, and you have all of these other platforms. 
uh, it makes me just wonder, like, you know, would StockXs have, uh, they've had multiple security breaches in terms of, you know, uh, people uh, accessing people's uh, information and, and I don't know, this just doesn't look, it's just not a good look in this time right now. Yeah, man, it's kind of like, when, a lot of people rely on this company. I mean, amongst all the ones that you also mentioned, but a lot of people rely on these places to pay rent. And I know some people are getting unemployment from other things, but like resellers are taking such a hit now because the times that things are taking is so much longer, even with the COVID shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All those employees lost is just extending ship out. It's like, I've seen so many people complain online about either not getting their order on time, or it's even later than they thought it was going to be. So it's like a lot of people are getting affected by this. I also feel like, especially something like like with StockX, where unfortunately, yeah, you do want your, the product you pay for immediately, but you also do have to realize that, yeah, you do have to give it time. I mean, everyone is like slow with shipping right now. I know Nike, yeah. you know, they had some, they're having issues in terms of getting products out, you know, to customers. So I'm not, that part I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to bash them on, but I definitely feel like uh Laying off is uh, it's pretty uh, pretty significant for for StockX, bro. Um, I'm not, I've truly never really been a StockX fan. Like I, I really uh, I I am a member, but I've purchased on StockX before. Um, but after the the, I'm one of the people to when that security breach happened, it really like turned me off. Like I was like really turned off, kind of like buy it. Um, I've used Goat a couple times, and I think I like the experience better. Um, so I don't know. I think the, the whole, the whole stock X thing, it may, I still like those tags either. They put on it. It just seems like such a, also with the authentication, authenticating them. It's like that tag doesn't mean anything. And now people make fake tags. So it's like, yeah, we never really talked about how some people made fake stock X tags. Do you make fake stock X tags? I'm like, what? I, I just don't, I don't know. It's like a lot for me. I, I like, I just like the whole go lay out better i've also seen uh, people resell just the tag like so you can get real tags yeah. and then yeah, you just like, buy it off somebody it's bad it's like, bad right here it's bad right yeah. here well i think i think also another thing with stock x and i'm you know i'm not trying to bash them but from i you know from some of my friends and what they've told me is they purchase a pair of sneakers off of stock x and then and then they get the sneakers from stock x and then they resell that same sneaker on stock X and stock X is hey uh we, this sneaker is not authentic or this sneaker is you know so I've I've seen that you know I, I've heard stories about that with stock oh X. I'm, I, mean, I haven't seen them, any of that that's that's like getting fake money from the bank man damn yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah. Uh, both both goat and stock X they have their you know they have their positives they have their negatives uh from from what I've heard with goat I've never uh I've never purchased or or sold anything on goat um but obviously it seems like what's the best way their interface is a um, stock x interface to me is a lot easier to deal with uh, yeah. gold is a little bit more a little bit more complex and also i feel like gold's prices because they don't i, I feel like their prices are uh, higher than if you look at the same pair of sneakers on stock x versus gold there could be differences anywhere between 20 and 150 dollars like it's a uh, for the same sneaker so I think, you know, that, but at the same time, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I've sold a bunch of things on StockX. I've never sold anything on Goat because it's so, to me, it's so much easier to sell on, on StockX. And StockX also sells clothing, uh, whereas Goat is a sneaker-based platform. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen, uh, I've, I, I like the under retail tab on Goat. Like you just get yes. that and they give you that filter. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's why, like, I've seen a couple of shit going on the radar there. And then when I compare those, to what's on StockX, usually it's a little lower, but like, I mm -hmm. guess it depends on really what sneakers you're buying for sure. Um, mm -hmm. it's, just all, it's just all pretty prevalent. I, I will say the GOAT orders I did do that, that was different than StockX, um, the sellers have canceled on me a couple of times and that was like annoying. I was like, what the fuck? Like it was, I on which it was like already agreed on GOAT. On so GOAT. Like, okay. I, would, I would get, I, yeah, I get, a, I get a confirmation thinking that everything's coming through or I got shoes coming. And then mm -hmm. I'm like, whoa. And then you see every step of the process happening. And it's like, the, you see that the, the seller hasn't shipped to, to go for authentication yet. And then all of a sudden they cancel it. And it's like, 
That's happened mm-hmm. a couple times. But, man, that's, it's, it's consignment. It's to be expected. It's part of the game. So, yeah, man. It's part of the game. Yeah. Um, you, Another thing, uh, speaking of StockX, and, uh, you know, we, we've discussed this a little bit, I believe, last week, uh, where now you, you're seeing that a lot of sneakers – uh, that have come out in the last year or two are are just exploding in terms of in, in resale price. Uh, you see that on, on StockX a lot now where people are either getting stimulus money or getting unemployment or just now just saying, fuck it, I need to buy sneakers because you've, you've seen in the last couple of months that sneakers have just, some sneakers have gone the fuck up from dunks to uh, and uh, aired some of the Jordans. Uh, and we're going to discuss that in a second. Uh, the the last dance uh, ESPN documentary the uh, the Chicago Bulls and from the ninety seven ninety eight NBA season uh, came uh, released last Sunday and it's a, a what five week experience and um, I noticed that just some of those Jordans from that era the thirteens and twelves and sixes and seven, they, they're going up man. Yeah, anything he played in, especially like the the actual colors he played in. Or mm-hmm. I've noticed that too going up, and I mean, I mean, I don't know if you want to get into it now, but when we ended the episode last week, immediately almost after we ended, they shock dropped the fire reds, which was something he actually played in. You know what I mean? So I think they're really trying to cater to this doc. I think they're trying to yeah. feed in. Yeah, I tried to get for those and uh, didn't get it. <laughs> really? Get it. Yeah, I tried. You know, I, it's funny. I had a pair of. Uh, pair of fire red fives back in 2008 when the countdown pack came out mm-hmm. right. and i remember having those in, so even though uh you know i i'm excited about the these fire red fives but i think honestly i'm just gonna pass man i'm gonna pass on those um it's such a pretty but, shoe it's such a pretty shoe when you see it um, yeah it's a beautiful shoe um but yeah i think you know it 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 brings back nostalgia it brings back a lot of memories you know um, but yeah, I'm just noticing, dude, that, you know, people are, are eating anything, you know, Chicago ones or, you know, the 2015 edition are, are fucking at a high right now. Yeah. They're over a thousand dollars. I saw it the other day. I was like, what? yes, yes. And <laughs> thousand dollars. Yeah, man. And I, I remember when I, I bought mine, uh, back in 2015, my boy had, a he had a connect. And I remember I, he told me they were like, I think 250. And, mm-hmm. um, and I, you know, I was like, fuck, I didn't want to pay the 250. They were one, you know, what are they, 160 or some shit like that? And, and, and yeah. he was like, 250. And I was like, fuck it, just do it. Cause I remember the, the madness that was going on that week when they came out. And I gave him, you know, I hit him off with, you know, like, I think like $30 or whatever, $25, $30. So I was paying close to three hundred dollars for a pair of ones, and and five years ago I was like, "What the fuck, man? I'm not trying to pay that for them." But to see where they're at now and in a five year stretch, I'm like, "Whatever." I mean, you win and you lose something, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely that's definitely one of the. I saw I was looking speaking of like you know stuff like that. I saw some SBs that I own uh, on StockX, and I was like, "Whoa!" Like they were like four eighty or something like that. Like some regular SBs that were like Aqua Chalk. Aqua Chalk SB, SB, fucking, they were, I remember I got them on sale maybe for 70 bucks, and, mm-hmm. like, they're 400 and, like, something dollars on StockX. I'm like, damn. Well, we Yo, discussed my, this on. Oh, no, you can go, go, go. I was going to say, yeah, uh, I said, we've discussed this on the podcast, man, the the SB boom, um, I like to call it, man, where it seems like, you know, a lot of these. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's definitely yeah. a resurgence yeah. where you have a lot of, you know, obviously I call it the Travis Scott influence, man, and you know, yeah, and, uh, he, that's true. He's he's been pushing SBs hard, and you know, a lot of these younger kids who, you know, who missed out on the boat originally, they see SBs and they're like, "Fuck it, I want to be like, you know, my favorite rapper." And then what yeah. also happens is people, you know, now you have. Imagine you can, you know, Kylie Jenner wears a pair of MF Dooms, and you know, and and you could yeah. got them maybe two years ago for you know five hundred dollars. Now you're like, oh, I got to pay twelve hundred for a pair of MF Dooms. Yeah. It's a, well, we it's yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Travis. I don't know if you guys checked out the the Fortnite thing, but it's like there's a lot of worlds that he like connects and also is just like in the right pocket for at the same time. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of people love music, so he hits older people, like, I guess, me. 
that are just like in the hip hop too because it's like you know like in that 30s to late you know mid 30s late 40s those mm-hmm. people like still think he's cool and then there's then there's the kids who are like oh this is our guy like oh we yeah the it. young and guys then, and, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, then this, and then all those people there's a whole big one with this, the Fortnite with the, the Fortnite shit yo that concert I I, I mean I would have never been doing it if I wasn't like wait did you go did you t- did you sign yeah. in and, you did oh tell me about just, it. just to do it. it I mean it's pretty dude it was pretty cool like wait Lawrence they, you didn't check that shit out either did you I, I I watched it. Uh, I went on some some dude on YouTube. Like he was playing and streaming the oh, concert. Oh, he was live streaming so. it. He was yeah. live streaming, and and I'm gonna say it was uh it was it was pretty cool. It was you know it was very different, but uh, yeah. it was it was well done. And I'm gonna say like I you know I I, I think I'm going on record as saying this that he is younger kid, Kanye West. Like when I yes. was. Mm-hmm. When I was younger, when I was like, you know, 20, 19, 20, you know, oh my God, Kanye could do no wrong. You know what I mean? And now I see these kids that are, you know, obviously even a little bit younger, 16, 17, who just fucking love Travis Scott. You know, I, mm-hmm. and I'm a, I'm a big fan of Travis Scott. I think he's, I think he's awesome. I think, you know, the music he puts out, he puts out a great, uh, he, sonically, he puts out some great music. I'm not yeah, looking, he's not the, He's not the most lyrical rapper out there, but right. what he does is he puts you in a uh, he puts you in a space when you listen to the music. And and like I said, I watched the concert, and I, you know, I, like I said, I had nothing bad to say about it. Really well done with Fortnite and, and Travis Scott coming together and and, and creating a, something you know that was definitely you know viewed by millions of people. Man, twelve point yeah. thirteen, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Dude, mm-hmm. it really, they really did try to recreate the whole thing of like going to a concert with your friends because like mm-hmm. you get in the lobby with everybody that you would talk to if you play the Fortnite game. Like, so it's basically just regular, what would be regular shit talking before a match would just mm-hmm. be, or like whatever is just like the oh, car man, ride to the concert. Gonna, yeah, sort of like that. I wonder what this is going to be like. And like, you know, you load it in and then everybody's like, everybody has to go to the place on the map. So you like so on the way over there, you guys are like, oh shit, I see a little song. Ah, it's like, oh, so it really kind of like recreates a lot of the weird feelings of like doing right. something with your friends. Um, and then for the rest of that, it was pretty much just you know Travis songs, you know, which is like yeah. whatever it's stuff we've heard all the time. But like the fact that the, you could some of the characters start flying during certain songs, and it's just like really trippy. And I think mm-hmm. Travis is uh, the perfect artist for it too because he's really into like trippy visualizations mm-hmm. too. Like, yeah. that's why he's kind of, like, has those Kanye similarities. Because he's into, like, all right, what's going to look dope? Like, all his videos are, like, weird. They're not, like, they're not just, like, you know, he, like, regular rap videos. They're really, you know. He really is like Kanye in that he tries to, um, like, create a mood versus, like, just a good song. So yeah, I think he took that, the like. Best thing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, back to your point, like, that, the Venn diagram that he has of the audience is fucking crazy. And it's great, yeah, it's a lot of crossover. Kid Even you got the Kardashian love, bubble too. Kardashian, yeah. Kid yeah. Cudi. I mean, they just dropped a new song. Uh, you know, to get Kid Cudi and, and Travis Scott. Um, and I think also, cool. I mean, yeah, songs, songs, all right. I mean, you know, I feel like you know, um, from around two thousand, you know, thirteen, uh, or two thousand, even like from that on, like you listen to. To Kanye's music, and you can tell that that Trav definitely had a. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say an influence, but you could tell Trav kind of put his his little spin on helping Kanye's music per se, his sounds at least. Yeah, I think yeah. they went back and forth. Yeah, because for sure. when you when you, when you start looking at the life of Pablo, and even like the concerts, and like it, 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 it I went to the life of Pablo, and I remember. Like you, there was moss pits and like you know all of that shit and that shit that Trav, you know, as mm-hmm. always, has has been about since he was you know since he first you know really started. So I think you know I, I and I don't know I just I think they both rubbed off on each other, but I can definitely see where Trav took off, like based on like modeling himself after Kanye. So yeah, yeah, for um, sure. But, yeah, man, but I, I think yeah, the concert the concert was dope. Um, he's got he's got his two he's 
he's fucking he's like the guy at Nike right now, man. You if you want your shit to if you want your shit to sell, you or not sell but have like a lot of hype, you put Travis Travis Scott on all of Cactus Jack you, somewhere. You throw you know what I mean, you throw uh you know, even we talked about like the Stussy, uh the Stussies that dropped. Uh mm-hmm. and you know, he was he was pictured in them and then people they started putting they like oh those are travis scott's or like not those are yeah, they, those they are started we, putting the shit together yeah, yeah well, man, remember, like, right. well remember when that happened with kanye when he just he wore a pair of fly mitts and all of a sudden the, the cost of a pair of uh, fly mitts went to like 450 dollars a pair just because yeah, man. just because it was they were even some people nicknamed them like yeezy fly mitts and it was like what and it was just him He's, just where he, he liked them no, that's that's like five six years ago, man. And where he, where anything, you know, and Kanye, the influence of Kanye. I mean, once again, on even this generation, I think is like just so understated, man. It's like from we're talking almost twenty years of Kanye being relevant. I mean, we're at we're probably at like fifteen, sixteen, but like close to twenty years of you know him just influencing people um on a on just like on a on a different level i mean there's not many rappers or musicians that you can literally say like people have uh just influence uh, like he has so much uh, in terms of style in terms of shit he, he put together you know from yeezys to you know every like you know g-shocks i remember when kanye was rocking white g-shocks man and yeah i remember he made, I, he made a lot of things popular yeah, man, and and I don't think you know. And same thing with Trap, man. Like you know, a lot of people, you know, they they both they're very similar, man. Yeah, the timelines of both of them, aside from the beat part, like making and producing music, mm-hmm. which I don't know how much Trap is really doing in that. But early on, that was Ye's thing. But compared to each other, that's the only part he's missing. They're very similar in the way mm-hmm. that they've mm-hmm. rolled out their shit. Um, man. Also, shout out to Yeezy. He's officially a billionaire. You know, he, mm-hmm. he oh. said he was going to do it. <laughs> said he was going to do it. He had a song mm-hmm. where he was like, yo, I'm going to make a billion dollars, but right now I'm in debt. And then, you know, mm-hmm. uh, what was that, 15? That was around 2015. Yeah, now, five years later, he's fucking, he talked his shit and he made it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that shit yeah. is crazy, man. Shout to Yeezy for, you know, more, more measies, more millions. Brilliant. <laughs> Well, where where do where does he go from here though, man? Because, um, you know, it feels like he's. I mean, obviously he's. I mean, they're gonna keep pumping these these Adidas sneakers. Uh, he kind of fell back from the the clothing aspect. I feel I, like I think he's, he's gotta definitely. he's gotta get out of the fashion space, and I feel like he's gonna go into real estate. Like I feel like everyone who ends up with money ends up in real estate. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, you talk about that compound. He, remember Charlemagne? He took him around on the mountain. He was like, "This is going to be like my village and shit." I mean, that was probably mm-hmm. like a really cultish <laughs> way to present it. But mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I could see that. I could see because he's like, you know, into design spaces now, like just just interior, you know, just making feelings and all that. And now that he can do it on a grant, like just with a lot of a, a shit ton of money, it's like, yeah, I mean. It's not really about money anymore after a certain thing. He just wants to like, he just wants people to like him. <laughs> yeah, he wants to start mm-hmm. Easytology and just have his own church in Calabasas somewhere on a hill. <laughs> you know, after he bought all the land, he's gonna have a little community. I think it would be in Wyoming more and more likely, but like, yeah. <laughs> a black man? It is, it's <laughs> <laughs> That was that the weirdest part of that video. That was the weirdest part of the video. <laughs> that quote by his dad at the end. <laughs> uh, so, has has uh, Yeezy jumped over the jump, man, like he uh, said he would do? Ooh, Look, I'm going to say he uh, had a really good hop. I don't want to say he jumped. <laughs> but mm-hmm. my man hurdled. <laughs> What is there a move? What's the name of the move when you ran track and you had to get over the hurdle? I guess it's just a hurdle, right? Yeah, he hurdled, jump man. He, he didn't jump. He hurdled. No, I, I think I definitely, I definitely think he. That is truly an arrogant phrase, and that's why it works for a rap song. But like, I think mm-hmm. he definitely 
did not jump over the jump man. Like, no, he, he didn't jump over the jump man. Now he took a left jump somewhere man. though and made his own path. He was like, he made his own, right. somewhere. He made his own thing, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. Like things like like you mm -hmm. know, like, it's like it's like beyond meat. It's like don't call it meat. It's just like it could be its own thing. Like it don't gotta be a burger. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's not what mm -hmm. it is. It has none. Has none of the compounds of a burger, and and Yeezy has none of the compounds of what made Mike great. Mike his shoes were so good because his persona of that excellence and the thing that he did. And, he, and, and you know, Ye's got his own argument for that, too, but it, you don't need shoes to, like, write songs. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, but I guess yeah. you got to feel fresh to write songs like him, but it's just, like, it's a different thing. And it's like, now, it just made Now, we, we talked a little bit about, you know, Jordan's, uh, the prices increasing because of the last dance documentary. Uh, you got, did you guys watch the first two episodes last Of course. Night? Oh Absolutely. yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> you want to watch this shit tonight too? Yeah, yes. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I was, I was excited to find out it was a stretched out thing and it wasn't going to be just like an hour. Like I was, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, good, give me all of it. Yeah, I was. Just, <laughs> <laughs> now let me ask you guys a question. Over here, it, was there anything in that doc that you saw that you didn't know or really just kind of surprised you? I think I was too young to realize how uh, little Scottie Pippen was getting paid. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah, think I that, I don't that, think that I understood that. For me. I don't have any memory of like watching ESPN and seeing it. Like there was those clips obviously in the doc, but I don't remember ever like thinking about Scottie Pippen's pay. I don't remember any of that. So that was a little eye opening. Um, mm -hmm. I might have just missed think, that because I was yeah. young. I focused a lot on just Jordan as the entity. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Being, I mean, Boston, white suburbs. Um, I that was the only part that really reached me. You know, it was just like, oh, MJ's the shit. Mm -hmm. The the details of basketball and what was going on behind it, I, like, I didn't play that much. I, I mean, I played casually, but, like, it, it wasn't, like, my sport to pay attention to. So all that shit mm -hmm. behind that was so interesting to me. That caught me really off guard. Got you. I, okay. I was interested in young. I used to, like, because uh, my, like, I got really into Michael Jordan in that first run, but he was already the man. Like, it was, like, like the first time I remember being awakened and paying attention so what was going on was 91, where it was like everything about my life was about Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny and all that shit. So like um, all the stuff about him being a rookie and being like not cool. Like even though you've heard those stories before, but just like the stories is like him going to the room and then be like, ah, oh, some rookie let him in. I'm like, damn, I can't believe somebody was like, somebody was like playing Mike. Like, <laughs> like, like somebody was like hazing Michael Jordan. Like that's crazy. But like well, you so know, that stuff was like really cool. You know what? It was weird. I, one thought. One thought I did have during the doc was like, if Jordan loves Scotty so much, why wasn't it wasn't in Space Jam? Ah, uh, that ain't got nothing to do with. I don't know. Yeah, what do you I mean, my I, man was my man was I, short on cash, right? He wasn't really short on cash, it, but he was I mean, short on he was, cash. He compared he to big. everybody else. Right. Yeah, but that which is like. Uh, I mean, Space Jam came out what ninety six. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't think I don't think Scotty's uh issues with his contract was, you know. All right, we're back from the Zoom breaking the podcast up, but uh, we were just talking about um, Space Jam, um, and why maybe Pippen wasn't in it because that's what I thought during that documentary. If uh, if he was strapped on cash, according to ESPN and himself, uh, why wouldn't Mike throw him in Space Jam? I mean, first off, I mean, how much? Uh, hold on. Uh, I mean, look, Space Jam was '96. That's prime time during his "I'm not getting enough money" contract. Well, he said. Well, I just, I actually, Chris, because you. You threw out that random question. Uh, he said he was uh, he was hurt and he was recovering from off-season injuries, so he wasn't able to submit. That's that's why he said. So if he was there, if he was healthy, he would have been there front and center. That's your answer. I'm not buying it, but that's, that's what he that's what <laughs> Chris he said. loves the controversy. I'm not buying yeah. it. Why are you not buying it? I don't get it. What's there not to? He, I don't. He took a whole off-season while he was hurt to just have fun during the summer. Okay. 
So he was well, an active person during like but a but that's your time. But that he took that ninety he took the ninety seven off season off. All right. We're doing timelines. The movie came out in November of ninety six. So that yeah. means they had to shoot it either summer of ninety six or summer of ninety five, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're saying he took the entire summer off. That's a year or two later, bro. So I mean yes. we don't so I understand you know what, what you're saying. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that, like, it seems like he's still willing. I know he was, like, trying to spite the upper management by doing that. But I know his reasoning for taking that um, summer and then getting the surgery during the shit. But Mm -hmm. it seems like he could have been there if he wanted to be because he's willing to do stuff while injured. That's my whole point. I know it's, like, a year and a half or two years before, but it's just showing that he's willing to do it. Bro, I, okay. Like I said, you you got your. You have, <laughs> I'm just explaining to you what the man Scotty no, Pippen you. said. You're saying that he's taking, he's smiting Chicago's management. We're talking '97. This is if the movie, if the move, the production of the movie began in 1995, right? Mm-hmm. At that point, Chicago had just lost to Orlando, the Magic, in six games. Okay, they lost in the Eastern Conference semifinals. They came back the following year and won championships. He could, yeah, they lost in the second round. He could have took that. He could have had a surgery. You know what I mean? He could have been hurt. That we're not disputing. What, him spiting Chicago's management two years later is not him trying to spite MJ on a movie. That makes absolutely oh, no, no sense. no, no. I wasn't even trying to say it was Scotty spiting him. I think MJ was just like, nah, you're not in my, you're not on my team. You're not in my five against the Monstars. <laughs> <laughs> but it was that's the whole point it was supposed to be cartoon jesus christ chris i don't i don't understand. I, I, I actually wanted to have a, a something poignant to say about the the doc and you took it to the he's not well he might no, no, no. we don't we don't need a we don't need a harp on it that's just one thought i had during it it was just interesting <laughs> to me that was it the, the well, whole doc you, itself was great though those two episodes. Hell, did you find out anything about the doc that you'd never have really seen before, like, or or didn't really know? Um, in terms of you know a lot of a lot of that shit, you know, I I did know. I didn't know the specifics of the seven year, eighteen million dollar deal, but I did that know was that crazy. He, I did yeah. know that he was very underpaid. Uh, but he, you know what what the doc didn't also explain was when he signed that deal to me in 91 which it, it's a little bit is a bigger backstory on why he signed it when he signed it but he signed it because uh Tony Kukoc which I don't know if they'll explain that later he didn't come over to the Bulls when he was supposed to so they had this extra money that uh either you were going to lose it it didn't carry over so Pip hurry up and sign the deal before uh this was game five of the 91 finals before they won a championship right so in that time when he signed that deal, a couple of years later, contracts blew up, bro. Like it, that happens now to players. Yeah. It happens Mike to Conley. players. Hmm? Yeah. Mike Conley. Yeah. Dude, you, you signed like Mike Mike was Mike got paid eight. He he did an eight year, twenty five million dollar contract back in in eighty eight. So it yes, he did get underpaid, and yes, Chicago was dirt bags for not you know, it's like changing the, 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 the deal in terms of like renegotiating with them. But that type of shit happens all the time, bro. Like you sign a deal and you're like, fuck. Like, you know what I mean? Whether the salary cap increases, the TV deals go up. Uh, what did shock me to, a little bit was, uh, and it kind of sucked, and I'm not like team Jerry Krause, but it's, it's tough when you're like truly just shitting on a dead man, if that makes sense. Because oh, he yeah. doesn't have the, you know, the doc, they started filming the documentary a couple months, I believe, after he passed away. And, um, and you know, I look at the owner of the bull, Jerry Reinsdorf, and I'm like, fuck, bro, like, don't make it seem like Jerry Krause was the only one doing this shit. Like, you were, you were the owner of this team. Like, you're, what you yeah. say also it it goes like you're the owner like let's not sit here and act like the general manager is above the owner sometimes in in these type of decisions but Reinsdorf knew that you know he he had a feeling that you know Mike was gonna retire and he was gonna fucking profit 
off of Mike being retired as well. And um, and Jerry Krause was so arrogant that he believed that he can create another dynasty. And and I, and I feel I feel like you know, but I also feel like you know that that Bulls team they were kind of on their last fumes anyway. And and that's how fucking sports go sometimes. And I should they have broken up the team? No, but I'm sure we'll find out a little bit more in the next uh, couple episodes. But I did love real quick, and then we'll change the topic because I love. Uh, seeing rookie Scotty Pippen, I've seen this clip before, but Charles Oakley slapping the shit out of rookie. Oh Scottie yeah, Pippen. that was so dope. <laughs> yeah, that was that was great. Oak Tree, so man. Good. Oh man, love Oak. But I mean, yeah, so they good. definitely that half a season, the Bulls would have definitely won again too. By the way, but you know, I think they would have retooled. I mean, the Spurs were solid that year. I mean, they also kind of. You know, there were other teams I thought was going to, you know, win. But, you know, Indiana. But, uh, listen, they had the storybook ending. Unfortunately, they were broken up a little too soon. And, and obviously, at, at that point, you know, Pippen, Jordan, you know, they, you know, they didn't have the same success as they did when they were together. Rodman only played, you know, one more season, you know. And then you had other guys who were on that team, like Steve Kerr, who won a couple more championships as a player. So, um. I'm yeah, really excited to, for these Dennis Rodman episodes. I think these are going to be the oh, real yeah. fun ones. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be, I think, fucking hilarious, man. Bro, because didn't um, he, like, just try to take a vacation during the season? Was like, I need to go to Vegas? I believe so. I believe he was – he's doing a lot of wild shit. He was, what, uh, married or uh, dating Carmen Electra. Like, he was doing a lot of wild shit, man. Rodman is the fucking man. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean – that, I mean, Rodman, man, that that just the blending of that team, man, never be done again. Greatest ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. But moving forward, um, uh, one thing we haven't discussed yet is the box logo that came out. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know Tough if either of you guys dope. tried. Dope. I don't know if either of you guys tried to get it. I did try to get it, and my phone almost exploded the second I got up. <laughs> I was going for it. There's no mm-hmm. chance. Yeah. Not, dude, I, I tried on like six different things. Nothing worked. I couldn't get in anywhere. Yeah, Did you guys it, it give was, it a shot? Uh, of course. We, I mean, who didn't give it a shot? You know, it's, uh, you, 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 I heard so many different things about the, the, the release of the tees. First, it was there were 7,000 t-shirts made. Then it went to 17,000. Um, it didn't matter. Um, Supreme... And here's the thing, man. A lot of people, some people were like, why they just, why didn't they make a million of these t-shirts? It's never been Supreme's way. No. Uh, no matter what, you can make a million t-shirts and then the million and first person is going to be like, fuck, why didn't they make more? Because I didn't get one, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, it, it was a very uh, nice box logo. But um, yeah, it just, you know, just goes to show you that, you know, like if you ain't, if you ain't copping this shit, with a with a bot if you don't have a bot sometimes you just ain't getting through man i I actually will say i got my i I bought my first thing from supreme in maybe over four years and Mm -hmm. i was i don't know if it was because the the stores are closed and they have a little more online stock but it was very easy Mm -hmm. it was very Mm -hmm. cool i was and i'm 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 happy i'm excited for the purchase but Mm -hmm. this box logo tea was dope i mean i tried i thought i love more comedy stuff i think it's I mean, you know, it, it has hey. all the elements of a hype release. Never mind. Yeah, during I, a, you know what? I don't pandemic. even like white t-shirts. I don't even like white t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Like I really don't. Mm-hmm. But I really tried to get this one, and I would have wore it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Murakami stuff is by far some of the hypest shit. Um, just referred to a designer. So the fact that they did this during this time is crazy. It's on StockX mm-hmm. right now. Lowest ask is seven fifty, and that's for a t-shirt. For a fucking t-shirt. That's mm-hmm. more than half of some people's stimulus checks, which is wild. I wonder if anyone's <laughs> using it for that stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm still somebody. I'm sure. I'm sure people are. I mean, wild. come on, man. Everything's going up, and, and definitely is because it's not because people fucking got a raise in their job. A lot of people were fucking using those, those stimulus checks to. <laughs> oh yeah. To cop, you know, because you know some people. I mean, some people the stimulus check and then the, the extra six hundred dollars you know, on top of what they're getting unemployment is more than they're making. So, you know, more than they make at their regular job. So Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of people that I know that, especially restaurant workers and stuff, that are fucking <laughs> bawling right now. <laughs> 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 You're bawling out, buddy? 
Mm-hmm. It's like the biggest like catch twenty two because you're like, oh yeah, I'm about to get this shit and get fresh in my house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like. Wait, did I tell you? Uh, did I say on the podcast that when I went to New Orleans, I got my tarot cards read, and the guy was like, "Oh, you about to like have a career shifting um, thing happen?" I think it was it was COVID nineteen and unemployment. You think he was talking about the world? <laughs> I think he was talking about me getting unemployment. Wow. Uh, I mean, it's crazy. Hey, yeah, like like Elle said, man. There's certain for certain people, depending on where your situation is, if you if you fall into a right pocket. This is really like a come up time for you, but yeah, you know, mm-hmm. I think it's important to make a couple of like, you know, thought out purchases. <laughs> I hope nobody's <laughs> out there. I hope nobody's out there really doing stuff like, damn, why did I do that? You know, because mm-hmm. uh, we've yeah. all had those moments. Um, I, there's definitely shoes I bought that I look back and I was like, man, I, that was so impulse. Like I didn't. I don't, I don't, I didn't really. Uh, that was me last week. I would have got the fire reds just because it. I was watching Jordan. I had it, the phone in my hand. I could have hit fucking thing, but <laughs> you just, the move. whole moment I was like, this is, this is meant to be. But then luckily they were sold out. So I didn't get it to mm-hmm. drop that 200. I mean, I would have been happy with them, but also I don't, I didn't need fire reds. Those are not something I need to add to my collection. I had a chance for fear of gods. They were around for a while. They didn't sell out for until like 30 minutes. The black ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, figure it out. They didn't sell out for at least first thirty minutes, and I, I, Where? I had them in the car uh, on sneakers. No, yeah, them shits, them shits flew, man. Them shits flew. Tra- Tracy won a pair from me, man. Them shits flew, dude. Wait, Tracy got you a pair? She she won them. I mean, I, I mean, she fucking yeah. And then I no, yeah, I, 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 I mean, you her... paid. Uh, you, she yeah, was I, given to you, but yeah, yeah, I, I that mean, is crazy. Yeah, so I mean, it's not just no, no, no. It's not just uh. It, so I, I, I mean. You love you may you may have thought they were around for third, but them shit flew, bro. Come on, man. Like this is a uh, this is an all black colorway of a fair god uh, sneaker. Uh, this might be the last uh, fair god one that comes up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. You know. You know that's gonna um, be a great fit with your sub podcast hoodie. Oh, the sub podcast <laughs> hoodie. That. Oh, yeah, I say that's nice. That's nice. I don't see you. Yeah, I'm out here. You know. Uh huh. But uh, no, guys, listen, man. I know this is a this is a time where you know um, Nike is or, or just retailers are just enticing people to spend money. But uh, I'm not a financial advisor, but I would say you know definitely stash your money because we don't know what's going to happen in yeah. the next you know uh, year. And so it's just you know I was talking to my friend uh, and one of my close friends, and he was saying you know he's looking at his sneakers and he's like. You know, he knows that there's probably going to be a chance that for a rainy day, he's going to have to sell some of these sneakers because he's got a kid and, you know, he doesn't know what's going to happen. And I look at this shit the same way. It's like, yeah, you may, you know, you may have got a pair of sneakers that are dope, but I mean, if you got to sell eventually, you know, yeah, who knows? Um, Look, man, I, I've told you, I still think about my Tiffany's every day, man, but that phone bill needed to be paid, you know, uh, for yeah. a few months. <laughs> yeah. So. We've all mm-hmm. been there. Mm-hmm. That's what um, I'm saying. So, yeah, man. Um, I think I think that's a good position to stop here. Um, I yeah. do want to say that um, one thing I did do uh during this time where because I got a bunch mm-hmm. of white tees and shit that uh they get like weird coffee stains or whatever on them. So I bought mm-hmm. a tie dye kit to salvage them. So I tie dyed mm-hmm. a bunch of stuff that was kind mm-hmm. of trash otherwise and. It saved them. There's a couple white tees now. They're just tie dye tees. Then I'm gonna wear like I got like a Huff and an A Life tee that I really liked. And you know oh, what? Sweet. My my sub podcast box logo hoodie uh, had this huge coffee stain on it. I did the best I could to get it out. I tie dyed it, and now it looks great. Now it's just like a hippie sub shirt. So I'm, that's great. So if anyone's got some shit they need to try to salvage, tie dye is the way to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also, yeah, generally, yeah, this is so. just a great time to clean your sneakers and shit. If you got nothing to do. And you got a pile of sneakers that are dirty. Grab the toothbrush, man, and just get at it because this is the time yeah. to do it. So oh, I've definitely been on that. I've definitely been on that. Yep. I rearranged my room three times. I'm waiting <laughs> on some. Uh, yeah, man. I'm waiting on some new beds, some new bedding. I'm really getting into home stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I really. Yeah, you know, yeah, man. I'm uh, like area rugs. Like, yeah, I'm just like so. I'm shopping for area rugs now. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was You're like, a real uh, adult there, Isaiah. Yeah, man. Area rugs. Um, but with that, 
Um, sub podcast 110 uh, with guest Isaiah Lorenzo. Thanks for coming in, buddy. Fly Zay yeah, on man. Instagram. What up? Uh, all LZD325, uh, Sub Podcast, NYC, uh, Trevisus, mm-hmm. Not That Cheney. Uh, you guys know all the shit. We just appreciate you guys riding with us. I got some DMs recently saying that. Discord. Um, Get up in that Discord, y'all. Yeah, Discord, there. too. Discord. Definitely join that. I got some DMs. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're new listeners or old, but they were saying we appreciate you guys still rocking during this time. So mm-hmm. that means a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Any final thoughts, guys? Anything else? Uh, just, just stay safe out there, please, guys. Uh, love one another. And uh, we'll be back soon, man. All right, man. All right, man. I'm gonna go make some dinner. I'm getting, I'm getting good with the the chefing out here. Nice. This COVID Damn. chef and shit is fire. COVID right, Chris man. chef, chef enjoy Chris COVID. All right, y'all. <laughs> All, All right, right man. Have peace. a good one, guys. Right. Peace.